So I mentioned um, that I'm going to have to come back to these different ways that we get a parcel of air rising. And once it rises, it expands. And once it expands, it cools. So um, they are balled up in these things called lifting mechanisms. And they're relatively straightforward. So I'm not going to like belabor it too much, lifting mechanisms. Um, so how do we get air moving vertically up so it can expand and so it can cool and cool to the point of the dew point temperature and go ahead and we get these clouds and that sort of thing. Well, the first one is orographic lifting and orographic lifting involves mountains and we'll talk about each one of these individually. Basically, air is slammed against a mountain and it can't go through the mountain so it goes up. That's orographic lifting. Um, later on in this class, um, we're going to be talking more about cold fronts and warm fronts. And so um, oftentimes with a weather front, which is basically the boundary between two, um, two chunks of air with different temperatures, when you have like a front like that, a lot of times that in and of itself is a lifting mechanism. Um, convergence basically is where um, um, two chunks of air or maybe multiple chunks of air come to a single line or single point and go up. That's convergence. Um, localized convective lifting, I think we talked about that earlier when we talked about convection in general is a way to relocate. When a blob of warm air relocates, takes its thermal energy with it, we call that energy transferring via convection. And so let's we'll look at that again. So orographic lifting is a lifting mechanism. Think mountain. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about prevailing winds, um, actually kind of global winds and um, later on and as you may already know a lot of our weather patterns come from I think I need to go this way from come from the west coast towards the east and um, so that's kind of our prevailing wind and in that sense basically we have the Rocky Mountains over here and so um, air can be forced up against the Rockies and then lifted and that's called orographic lifting. So the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains then would be a Nevada and stuff like that. And oftentimes on the leeward side of mountains, we can have um, uh, uh, rain shadow, which is basically a desert. All right. So here you go. Um, this is, uh, we consider kind of, I mentioned this, this California, right? CA for California. This is the Pacific Ocean. Um, and we have kind of the influence of a westerly wind here. And it's slammed up against the Rockies. And one of the part of the Rockies are the Sierra Nevada range. Um, so we see um, it's this is the orographic lifting right there. Okay, so as it's forced up, it expands and expands, it cools to the point of uh, the elevation we call the lifting condensation level where you have clouds form. And notice that basically um, on the, the leeward side, it doesn't, the leeward side, it doesn't have much um, moisture. Okay, or graphic lifting. Okay. The, Another way to get a chunk of air moving up, I mentioned, is these weather fronts. And we're going to, I think we briefly talked about fronts before. And remember, basically we have in the northern hemisphere our cold fronts. And I know this isn't the right color because cold fronts would be blue, right? Um, but cold fronts also would be this kind of pokey sort of triangle. So we have cold air masses moving down. And actually, um, then what can happen is right along this front is another sort of lifting that goes on. And I think I have a, um, a figure coming up to show you. So cold, cold air, and we'll talk more about this, but cold air is more dense and will hug the ground. So frontal lifting or frontal wedging associated with, um, with a, the approach of a cold air mass with a cold front in front of the cold air mass um, can be kind of like straight up and down. Um, warm fronts um, in the northern hemisphere tend to come from our south. Let's see. Okay, and actually it's the right color for a warm front, isn't it? And instead of triangles, they'll be semicircles. Okay, so a warm front basically has warm air 
going that way. Um, and warm fronts, although they don't hug the ground, they can also have this sort of lifting going on with them. It's kind of more of an up and over sort of mosh pit than necessarily kind of the snow shovel sort of approach with a cold front. So both of them can have a lifting. Okay, it's, one, it's a lifting mechanism here called wedging. Wedging, lifting, same thing. We'll be talking more about um, frontal, um, the, the weather associated with fronts later on, obviously. Uh, convergence is an example sh is shown here, basically, where we can have um, wind generally coming, surface winds coming from two different directions. I don't know if you can make this out, but this is Florida. Okay, and we have winds coming off the Atlantic Ocean, winds coming off the Gulf of Mexico, and those winds meet, and then they, they, uh, they converge, and they run into each other, and they force each other to go up vertically. And so this is kind of neat. This is like a, an image of, the, um, of Florida there, kind of the, all the little clouds there. Okay, so convergence is another way you can get um, uh, it's a lifting mechanism to get air ascending vertically. Um, the last one is this, um, and this looks very similar to what I've shown you before. We talked about, and the way I think of it, is you can have um, a spot, like a hot spot, on the Earth's surface. And why is it hot? Basically, it's for, for whatever reason, the color, the texture, it, it, its albedo is lower. Well, low albedo means it absorbs more radiation. Absorbs more radiation, that means it's hotter. So basically, you get kind of a hot spot. And as you get a hot spot, you can kind of heat that little bit of air near that hot spot. And then what happens, and we'll be talking more about this actually in chapter four, is that hot spot, or that chunk of air that's now a little bit warmer than its surroundings, it will be less dense, it will be lighter, and it will want to float. And so kind of that's this sort of buoyancy is um, of a warm air, warm parcel of air, warm relative to its environment is actually what's behind localized convection. So I'll go ahead and kind of finish, put this, put this up. Now, what I like is this third slide over here, and I, I do think that we talked about this when we talked about the ways of transferring thermal energy, and one of them is via convection. Convection basically is a blob of fluid, in this case air, that is relocating and taking its thermal energy with it. So that blob of air, or that thermal energy, that blob rose vertically, it expanded and it cooled, and can you see um, considering how much uh, water vapor it had in it, that is the elevation it needed to rise and cool to in order for condensation to occur. So this right here, this elevation is the LCL, the lifting condensation level. Um, so one of the other things about these, and I think I mentioned this before, is that kind of this tendency of warm air to rise actually is taken advantage of by our raptors. Here you see this beautiful eagle here, okay? And also this tendency for warm air to want to ascend. Remember in the, in the, um, the thermos, not thermosphere, sorry, the troposphere. The troposphere, the layer, the thinnest layer of the Earth's atmosphere, and it's closest to the Earth where, where the, our weather occurs. Actually, it's supposed to be warm and then getting colder as you go up in the troposphere. So we kind of tend to have this sort of um, gentle kind of convective lifting all the time. Um, so actually, it's convective lifting that actually can help um, pollution to go ahead and relocate from the Earth's surface upward, which I suppose that's a good thing.